what we're going to talk about today is how you can work out 20 minutes, six days a week. Take your total volume and see if you could divide it up over short workouts, six days a week, 20 minutes, six days a week, which is uh, about two hours a week. But here's the difference. What you'll get with 20 minutes a day is going to be better results, probably, probably at least 50% faster than two one-hour workouts, for example, and definitely more than one two-hour workout. Watch what happens to your body, okay? Watch what happens to your body. Literally, it's the same of everything except it's more frequent. And most people will see better results uh, doing it this way. Believe it or not, the workout that can build the most muscle might actually only be 20 minutes. Ooh. Yeah. Sorry to sound like Dave Asprey now. I, <laughs> <laughs> a wealth of information. Yeah. <laughs> That he makes up. Perfect. No, um, you can, so uh, I wanted to do this because we were talking about this because that study that came out recently, which kind of confirms what we talk about all, all the time, which is that when you control for volume, uh, frequency, it makes a big difference. In other words, same total sets, but more often, if you could work out more often, you tend to see better gains. And all of us experience this with ourselves and with our clients. But before this study that came out, um, there were other studies that showed, oh, no, two days a week is the same as four, so long as the, the volume is equated four. And all of us are like, oh, you know, I get that, but our experience shows otherwise. Yeah, I've seen the opposite. Yeah, that, that more frequent but shorter workouts, uh, because obviously you have to control for total volume. By the way, for, for if you're not following, total volume would be like the total sets and exercises you did for the week, right? So you could take all those exercises and sets – do them in two workouts or do them in six workouts or whatever. And it's not equal. Even though it's all the same, the more frequent you work out, uh, typically the better the results uh, tend to be. And I've experimented with this. I know you guys have too. Now, this, mm -hmm. this study that you're referencing, well, there's two studies. Uh, one, the, the one that you're uh, originally referencing is just recent. So for, forever on the show, we've been talking about frequency as king. Yeah, and and there's a lot of people besides us that promote you know frequency and and the importance of it, and that there's studies in the past that it came out and have sh shown exactly what you're saying, which is if all things are equal, sets, volume, everything, reps, all that stuff like that, either you know dividing it over uh, two times in a week versus three or more, three or more ends up winning. And then recently, just a couple of weeks ago, a study came out that debunked that, and then. Two weeks later, this study comes out yeah. that you share with us. So what what's true? What was missing in the the previous study that said that that basically debunked what we had been saying? Well, the problem, and then the this pro one now confirms it again. Right. Well, the problem is is it's hard to equate because uh, or or to control for volume and stuff because lots of compound lifts use lots of muscles. So if you're like, oh, I only hit back twice a week and biceps twice a week, no, you're really hitting biceps four days a week, right? Because back exercises tend to use quite a bit of biceps, lots of rowing, lots of pull-ups and stuff like that. So this last study that came out was a single joint exercise, no crossover stimulation. It mm. was just curls. And they compared the same total volume of two days versus five days. And the five days crushed the two days, even though the volume was all the same. So this is without uh, even compound lifts. It was an isolation. This episode. is just like, mm. let's just, let's get everything down to the most, the easiest, most controllable factors. Right. That way we could really compare apples to apples. Otherwise it gets a bit challenging when you're comparing study to study because some studies may train at a higher intensity. They may use more compound lifts, you know? Uh, so you, you want to, with studies, you always want the mo the, the, if you're going to compare two studies, you want the controls to be excellent, to take yeah. every possible so there's variable there's no carryover. Out. Like I could yeah. see how that could have been, you know, somewhat misleading because compound lifts, you're going to have that kind of crossover and carryover into other, uh, the same uh, muscle groups. Yeah. And now, now, and again, and we've all experienced this in, in my experience, you're better off working out more frequently and more often, again, so long as the volume is controlled for the results. In, again, in my experience with clients and with myself, are always better, always better with more frequent. Uh, but you know, again, same total volume. I feel like notes. I feel like that's such an obvious thing because we know this in sports. We already, if you were to ask somebody, "Hey, you got three hours to shoot free throws," uh, spreading it out over you know six days and 30, 45 minute increments is one option. Or cramming all three hours in one day, what do you think is going to give you the best? Hundred yeah. percent. And people forget that the adaptation process, muscular adaptation, it's a, it's really a learning process of the body. 
your skin tanning is an adaptation process. You learning a new skill is an adaptation process. Remember, neural connections have to be made. So what's happening is your brain is literally like your muscles building. It's learning a pathway. Well, it's learning something. The only detriment is if you over misuse intensity and therefore you know you you teeter more towards overtraining because of you're doing it so frequently. But that's that's a variable you have to really consider if you are uh, going this this well, often. That's the only reason why I think it's it's been that because with sports like shooting a free throw. I'm not going to shoot a free throw with such high intensity that it hinders tomorrow shooting the free throw or the next day shooting a right. free throw. Weight training presents that challenge because it's so hard for us to measure intensity, especially when so much information is out there about beast mode, all out, training to failure, and all the benefits of training intensely. That's what makes it so challenging. That's why I think a lot of people don't realize how how important or how much how beneficial it will be to be more We've frequent been so and, conditioned that way so i think a lot of people will misuse it uh and not realize it because it's just the way that they approach workout yeah well, i'm well, still guilty of this i mean i i don't know about you guys but yeah. I, it doesn't matter like if i if i tell myself okay this week i'm gonna i'm gonna try and squat three times this week you know which i know is can be taxing on the body it, it's it's hard for me to do a squat session and not kind of get after it, you know. Even in a little, even a slice way, it does not take much to overreach when you're basically hitting hitting that exercise, especially a compound lift like that, every other day. So it it takes a lot of dis. And I know the studies. I know the benefits of the frequency. So I think that the average person still has so much of that messaging about getting after it and what a work, what a good workout constitutes. Oh, I have to be sweaty. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. to feel the burn. I have, to have this massive pump. I have to feel the soreness. Like so those, these are all the things that they think. So that's going through their head as they're training. And, and but you have to understand that if you're going to increase their frequency like that, you had to dramatically reduce the intensity. Well, there's two things that get in the way. One is that people don't equate volume. So they say, oh, I'm working out my legs once a week. They say do it three days a week. They don't reduce the volume of that one workout. They just triple it. Well, okay. Well, now, yeah, you're working out three times as much, but you're also working out with three times as much yeah, volume. You're supposed to spread it out. Yes. Two is what you guys are saying. Intensity is an important, uh, it's an important factor in your workout programming. But if you push the intensity too hard, uh, too often, your body only worries about healing. And, and the pro part of the challenge is that we think that recovery and adaptation are the same thing. They're not. Uh, although they, they often overlap, one is healing, the other is overcompensating, okay? So it's like if I take sandpaper and I rub my hand and I create and I break the skin down, before my skin builds a callus, it has to heal what has been lost. Then after that happens, I start to build a callus. But if I just keep rubbing the skin down every time it heals, well, now I'm just, I'm healing and breaking down, healing and breaking down. And people confuse the recovery process with adaptation. They're actually different. One is healing. One is the body saying, how can we become more resilient next, for next time? time. Mm -hmm. For next time, yeah. right? And, and they overlap. And this is why people often confuse this. But if you look at studies on like muscle protein synthesis, which... So uh, muscles growing, you'll see positive muscle protein synthesis. Muscle shrinking, you'll see negative protein synthesis. When you work out, that protein synthesis, as measured, spikes at about 24 to 48 hours, and then it starts to drop really quickly. So after about two days, you start to lose that muscle building adaptation process, but you, you might still be sore. You might still be trying to heal. So what happens is people end up just doing the healing process and not really focusing on adaptation. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I encountered this and it blew my mind. I had a trainer that worked for me who he was so strong, in particular in the bench press. I could see this guy bench press four plates and I was like, this guy is a maniac. Mm -hmm. And this is when I first, I remember it was one of the first clubs I ever uh, managed. And I, I walk in there and I don't know, it was like day two and I see this guy benching and he's just repping three plates. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And then I noticed that in between clients f throughout the day, like, like he'd train a client, client would leave. He'd have a half hour between clients or whatever, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. He'd go load up the bar. He'd do like two, three sets of bench press mm -hmm. and then he'd rack it up and he was done. Yeah. And I thought he's just, a, I thought he was just a, a workout addict at first. I'm like, oh, this guy's bored. He's just working out. And then I asked him and he goes, no, that's what I do for bench. He's like, I don't have a workout where I bench. He goes, I literally go out to the floor I'll throw some the weight up a few times. I'll put it up, and I'm done. And the intensity that he used was moderate. Mm -hmm. It wasn't super high intensity. He's not maxing out. He wasn't ah, you know. It was like it was you know it was heavy, but it wasn't super hard. 
And he got really strong doing that. And I remember I tried that myself with a couple lifts, and my strength literally exploded. That was the first time I had ever been He's exposed to that. He's teaching his body to get better at that specific movement. And I've I've seen this, too, with one of my clients who uh, made serious progress, progress with um, pull-ups and would set up a bar at their house. They would do one pull-up a day. Then two pull ups a day. Yeah. And then just whatever they could do, like pretty easily, and then stop it right there. And they would just like continuously do this to where, to a point where they got 20 pull ups easy. And it was just a, a continuous thing that they would go and not tell fatigue or anything. It was just whatever they could do, whatever their body felt like strong wise, they could pull off. You know, this is the way that a lot of uh, strong men and strength athletes used to lift back in the way back in the day. So there's like really some of the first workout manuals okay that were written you know like in the late 1800s okay early 1900s if you read them the commonality amongst them is to not overtax your body and to practice they would use words like practice your lifts frequently and often practice them often but don't tax your body too much this is how they talk now later on it became a completely different i think anabolic steroids played a role in that I also think that um, just the total amount of volume that certain advanced you know bodybuilders are trained, maybe it's not doesn't make sense uh, to do these kind of. I workouts. also think studies mm -hmm. are, are responsible for that too, because we started studying things in isolation versus like they had to think back then, like holistically. They didn't have all these great tools to measure just the the damage that's being done or measure how much yeah. intensity that's it's just happening. what worked. Yeah, what worked. It's like, oh, what we notice is when someone backs off, it's because they had to think holistically versus the ability to study really focused on one yeah. thing. I think sometimes we've confused by confused a lot of people by being very specific when we get to understand that the body doesn't operate that way. No, and some of the best trained athletes in strength sports in the world are Olympic athletes. Okay, because this is a sport that where there's been a lot of, if you look at all the strength sports, more money and science has been poured into Olympic lifting than any other strength sport, mainly because it's been an Olympic sport for, for a long time. And because during the cold war, the, you know, it, it was like, it was like bragging rights, the Soviet union versus America, who could win more medals right. and the Soviet union, this was state sponsored sports, meaning that their athletes were, the government was like, we want the best athletes. And they spent a lot of money on studying the best science, the best supplements, the best drugs. I mean, we learned a lot from them when the when the the Soviet Union collapsed and some of their coaches came over. And a lot of the ways they trained was kind of this moderate intensity, very frequent practice of lifts. Mm -hmm. Like for example, uh, what like one application of this would be like, let's say you could squat uh, 225 and 10 reps is your max. Yeah, that's like your you, 10 reps, you go to failure. You would practice and do five reps every day. And you would do it every day for 30 days, even if five reps got so easy. Then after 30 days, you'd add 15 pounds and then mm -hmm. do it again. Something like that, right? And the strength gains were insane. Very long, drawn-out progression. And, and what happens, what always follows strength gains, I want people to know this, not always, at some point, you know, I'm talking about when you're super advanced and it gets a little whatever, but especially when you 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 haven't been working out for five years consistently, what follows strength gains is muscle. One of the one of the best things if you see your strength go strength gains go up 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 up, you know muscle is following along or building along that, and you get great uh, results. So you know what we're going to talk about today is how you can work out twenty minutes six days a week, twenty minutes six days a week, which is uh, about two hours a week, two total hours. But here's the difference: what you'll get with twenty minutes a day. Uh, is going to be more better results, probably probably at least fifty percent faster than two one hour workouts, for example, and definitely more than one two hour workout yeah. uh, that you'd be doing during the week. So it's basically twenty minutes a day uh, is what you'll be doing. Well, one of, one of my favorite things about the way we structured this was also intentionally keeping it only twenty minutes, so it kind of modifies the intensity for someone trying to follow it, right? Because I think again, back to my original challenge that I think people have is this idea like, oh, if I'm going to work out six days a week or in, in, increase the frequency on a muscle, I want to get after every workout where 20 minutes only allows you about five to eight sets tops at most at most yeah. that you're going to be able to do in that amount of time. And then you have to move on. And so, and if you pick, you know, half of those as compound lifts, that's going to take up a majority of your time. And then you got maybe yes. time for like one isolation exercise. Yep. What's up everybody. Here's the giveaway for today. Maps strong. This is a strongman inspired workout program. And here's how you can win it for free. 
You got to leave a comment below this episode uh, in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section uh, and you'll get free access to Map Strong. Now, uh, everybody else, you got to check out our sale right now. Um, if you go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, Maps Starter is 50% off. It's a good beginner program. And the Prime Pro Bundle is 50% off. They're both half off right now. There's only three days left for this. So go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code August50 for the discount. All right, here comes the show. Now, one of the bet, one of the number one uh, positives to doing this, again, we're going to we're going to make everything the same. So same volume, same time. So let's compare two one hour workouts to 20 minutes, six days a week. Okay. It's the same total time. The, one of the, the positives or advantages to the 20 minute workouts is you have better technique. Mm -hmm. You have better technique because fatigue doesn't get in the way. The biggest enemy of, of technique and form is fatigue. Yep. Yep. That's a hundred percent. Number one, besides the fact that maybe you don't know the exercise, you don't have good control, all things being equal, fatigue is a technique killer. Again, this is why Olympic lifters do not train at max loads. They perfect their technique constantly with lighter loads. And exercises, here's what's 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 cool about them. Proper technique gives you tremendous value from an exercise. Mm -hmm. Improper technique gives you terrible value and or you end up hurting yourself at worst. Well, it brings uh, the intent back to, to the exercise specifically because, you know, once you eliminate fatigue, because fatigue... A lot of times, like you're focused on getting through the reps. You're, yeah. you're focused on like whatever it takes to to move the weight to, um, you know, get it done. And with that type of mentality, you ignore a lot of these like um, type of deviations that get away from you. And so it, it just helps the quality go way up. And your your body is now um, patterning these better movement patterns to where it's like it, you get more efficient at the lift. So when you go to do it again, you've been practicing such good technique with it without any interruption that your body starts to really just do that specifically. Yeah. I also love how, how easy it is to stay consistent. Okay. This is a big point because someone might say six days a week. That's that's going to be hard to say. Yeah, but it's, it's short. Easier. It's short. Yeah. yeah. You're only committing to five sets. For you to only commit to like five to six sets, that's not a lot. There's been, and in fact, I this is my recommendation to people when they're when they're considering not getting their workout is like, stop over committing yourself that you have to do this hammer the weights for an hour and do fifteen to twenty sets of all these exercises. Like sometimes when I'm just not feeling in the mood to crush it for an hour, I just go do five sets of a, a very worthy exercise that I know I'm gonna get a lot of bang for my buck. Sometimes that leads to a longer workout. Sometimes I shut it down right there mm -hmm. and said, at least I did that. And, and that has tremendous value. And I think that it's it's totally underrated. Plus, if you ever want to eventually get to training six days a week for an hour time, this is such a great place to start. You know how I figured this out too? Because I used to think like, oh, I don't want to ask a client to, like cardio was a big one, right? Uh, or activity with cardio. And, you know, you, you, I want to, ask my athlete, my, my, my client to work out every day. And so it's okay. Well, you know, let's do an hour of cardio a week. It's like, okay, well, I think I could schedule two 30 minute sessions or one hour once a week. And they would always miss some and be inconsistent. And then it dawned on me. Why don't you just do, do 10 minutes, six days a week, just mm -hmm. do 10 minutes. It's the same time. It's an yeah. hour. Yeah. Do 10 minutes, six days a week. And guess what? Everybody became consistent yeah. and, or they missed one or two, yeah. but so, but they ended up doing 40 to 50 minutes. Yeah. Why? Because it's easier to do 10 minutes a day mm -hmm. than it is to take 60 minutes out of your day once a week or 30 minutes twice a week. So with something like this, to give you guys an example, uh, if you have a basic, like you have a pair of dumbbells, let's say you have a barbell rack and dumbbells. Okay. So super basic weight set, even just a, a dumbbells, but whatever you have that in your garage and you're at home. Uh, and you're like, okay, time to go do my 20 minute workout. You go in the garage and you go do three to five sets or five sets of it. You're done. That's it. You do that every day versus, okay, I got to find a place to inject my one hour workout, which means I got to make sure I have a babysitter. Got to do this, that, that 20 minutes. Most people could do that with their kids. They could do that break while they're at work or whatever. It's very, it's actually easier to be consistent. In fact, habits are easier to make. Or, or keep when they're short but daily 
versus long but infrequent. Everybody knows this. This is actually uh, this is actually a fact. If you have to do something for a short period of time but do it every day, it develops into a habit very easily. So if you have like a daily habit of a 15 to 20 minute workout, you're more likely to be consistent than you are otherwise. And I know what we're we're covering right now is six 20 minute workouts, but there's nothing that says that you can't split that 20 minute workout into two tens, which is what Katrina Oh, you can go crazy with this. Katrina does this a lot. Yeah. Like and I shared this on a recent podcast that um, I remember when I explained this to her, it became like this huge thing for her. Like, oh my God, why did I not understand this before? Like, because that's always been her reason why, oh, I didn't get a lift in. It's like, oh, you got, we have a new, at this time had a newborn and busy with work, busy with stuff around the house, busy with a newborn. It's like, man, trying to time an hour and you finally get that one, one hour. And it's like the last thing you want to do is work out for an entire yeah. hour. So her just giving her that, Hey, I can go get 10 minutes in right now. And then I'll get another 10 minutes later on. And now I've got a, a decent workout for the day and then be consistent with that every day. She saw huge results from that. Yeah. Well, the other thing I like about this is that, um, it really encourages that you practice the best, most effective lifts. Because you're probably going to do one lift mm -hmm. or two with 20 minutes. Now, with a long workout, you're looking at your long workout and you got, you know, squats and rows and presses and overhead presses and pull-ups and all these finisher man, exercises. Man, halfway through, you're like, you're, you're fatigued, man, and you're tired and <clears throat> it's not the same. But if you're doing one lift... And you're like, I'm going to go do squats. I mean, you're going to practice the squats. You're not thinking to yourself, I'm going to do leg extensions. I only have one exercise to do. I'm going to go do leg. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Well, think about, too, how um, you know much relief that is mentally for a lot of people, too. Like They look at their their list of, of workout to accomplish for the day. And I know a lot of times psychologically that can deter people based on like their energy, their mood or whatever it is. Like if they see this long laundry list of like items they have to accomplish, you know, versus just really simplifying everything and making it about the most impactful exercises I can pull off in a timely manner. You know, that's pretty freeing. Absolutely. I, I know we're going to lay out at the end, uh, like a, a example type of a workout or how we would kind of structure it. But that's so important to note, though, what makes uh, this possible, this whole idea of getting jacked in 20 minutes or less in six days a week training. Uh, the, the secret to it is you have to do those lifts. Because if if someone heard that and then they go, oh wow, you know, my pump said I can just work out twenty, and you did all isolation exercises, yeah, the the, the it would it would still be better than doing just impact. all those ex isolation exercises in one workout. I mean, the rules still apply. You still want to do the best exercises when you work out, right? It's just because you're doing one or two for twenty minutes, you're more likely to be ready to do them and yeah. good at them. I mean, I mean, but I mean, if you want to see you want to see tremendous results and change in yes. your in your body and your physique then it's important that you choose the the big bang for your type of exercises because yes you, you you're right comparing that but it's, that's exactly the same you're right if we were to do two one hour workouts that were all tricep push downs bicep curls lateral raises type yeah. of, of a routine you're only going to sculpt and build your physique so so well or so fast by doing that it's important that you choose these exercises that are your, your big bang yeah for and you find and what you end up finding is you get good at them really fast uh doing it you know uh doing it in this particular way um here's the other part and and this can't be understated um ex exercising properly dramatically improves the quality of your life, every aspect of your life. So I, I don't care what aspect of your life you name, sleep, uh, energy, sex, work, being a parent, whatever it is, if you become more fit, everything uh, improves a little bit. Some things improve a lot. But there's one aspect of exercise that people, that can, that people completely forget when it comes to improving the quality of your life. And that's just making you feel better generally. Now, I know if you're healthier, you generally have more energy. But people expect after a workout to feel like dog shit. They think after a workout, they're supposed to go home. Right. Oh, that's, oh, man, I do, oh, you know. Oh, crushed me today. Blah. Yeah, I do this, that boot camp class. And man, I am exhausted. <laughs> I got to sit on the couch. Or, oh, boy, you know, sorry, kids, can't play with you. I just finished doing that crazy, you know, hour workout or whatever. That's not, I've, and we've been pre preaching this for a long time. You should feel better after your workout than you do before. Well, guess what short workouts do? 20-minute workouts. Yeah. That's exactly what they do. Little turbochargers. You do a 20-minute workout where you're practicing some of these big lifts and you do it right. Afterwards, you feel better than you started. Now imagine you do this six days a week. Not only do you get the benefit of increased fitness or improved fitness, but now you get the benefit of this 20-minute energy charger that gives you uh, more energy and vigor 
and a better outlook for the rest of the day. Trigger sessions do this as well, but this would do it even more. The trigger sessions were my first real experience of piecing that together and realizing like how powerful that yeah. was because, and I've talked, I think at nauseum on the podcast already about, you know, I caught myself in these days where I didn't want to do anything and I could just, I come home from work and just want to sit on the couch and not move and just simply getting up and spinning 10 minutes. I mean, trigger sessions weren't, aren't even that long, eight to 12 yep. minutes long and just getting some blood pumping, heart rate moving a little bit faster. And now all of a sudden I felt like I just had a shot of energy mm -hmm. and now I'm ready to go do more stuff. Like you can't, you can't state it enough how valuable it is. I know we're talking about being jacked and that means losing body fat and building muscle. And I know a lot of people are interested in the superficial part of it, but there's tremendous value in just overall happiness and, and production in life, which makes you a better father, better husband, better around, better partner, better business person. Like yep. by just having that, I, that's why another reason why I really love the shorter and more frequently six times a week. So it's a practice in your, in your daily it promotes routine. more movement. You want to be more active. You know, you keep get this frequent stimulation of muscles um, it, it, it contributes to that. So, and, and you know, the more active you are, uh, just, uh, throughout the day between calories and whatever you're trying to do nutritionally that you can match in terms of being in a deficit, you know, makes all that process a lot easier. So maybe you are going to reduce body fat and all these things are going to happen as a result. Yeah, I know. And this was, this was even a point that we necessarily stated, but, um, you know, if you, if you miss a workout, you still did five other workouts, right? You do two one hour workouts, you miss a workout. It's like half your exercise for the week. So it's, uh, that's another positive. Another positive is it's, it's very easy to modify because every day is different. You feel different every single day you wake up and you do, you're like, well, okay, I'm a little tired today. I'll go easier. Oh, I feel a little more energy. I'll go a little harder. And you have six days to modify that. By the way, this does something and this can't be understated. This encourages a very important um, character, you know, part of your character when it comes to long-term success with fitness, which is starting to understand how to listen to your body. Why? Mm -hmm. You get daily practice. If you only work out twice a week real hard and real long, you, you may look at that workout as a be-all, end-all, not want to listen to your body. Like, it's Thursday. It's the only day I get to work out. I'm going to go beat myself up. You work out six days for 20 minutes, you're more apt to listen to your body and drop the intensity or raise the intensity or go a little faster or go a little slower it encourages that behavior of listening to your body. And I found this with clients. The clients that did this were really good at listening to their body because, well, tomorrow I'm going to work out again. So today I can kind of take it easier. Well, I like the idea of like how easy it is to mold and modify this. Like, you know, it's kind of ironic that we're doing this episode because I just had a day where, uh, or a weekend where I was with Max and we, uh, we washed two of the cars and I meal prepped and, and I also worked out and during that process, I had the garage up and that's where my squat rack and everything is. And basically I almost followed this protocol to a T. So I actually ended up doing six, six sets and I did, uh, three sets of bench and three sets of squat. And but the way I did it wasn't like this perfectly timed in between. I didn't try and make it exactly 15 or 20 minutes. It's just like I'd get a set of squats in. I'd wash the car, play with myself yeah. for a little bit, go get another set of squats in. And I kind of just stretched it out over the course of like three hours of me doing a bunch of other stuff and just built – my routine and just went over, had it on the squat rack, did it, did a set, went over, did some other stuff, came back over, did a set like that. And it, give, it gives you that kind of freedom to train that way when you are let go of this idea of like, I got to eat in this time. I've got to break a sweat. I've got to feel a burn. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, what I need to do is I need to accomplish these six sets that I said I was set out to do today. And it doesn't matter if I do two of them back to back and then I go do a bunch of other stuff and then I come back. Like it really kind of gives you that freedom to do that. Yeah. By the way, you know who hates this message? Cause I, I need to make this point before we continue um we have to people have to understand something that the uh, that the fitness space a lot of the content comes from the supplement industry side of the space because that's the money making side of this space just like the pharmaceutical industry tends to push studies in in health supplement space tends to push the messaging when it comes to fitness supplement companies don't like this message because it means you're not necessarily taking the super pre-workout and the intra workout and the post workout and all the yeah. stuff around my hour and a half workout. You're not going to need all that. It kind of gets rid of all of that. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why this, because this is old wisdom, by the way, everything we're communicating right now, strength athletes have known for a long time. It just kind of gotten forgotten because it doesn't sell products uh, nearly as well. Um, but So here's the last point. This kind of training encourages adaptation over healing. And here's why. Mm -hmm. 
because you're not getting so fatigued during that workout, the damage is actually minimal, but the adaptation signal stays pretty damn strong. So what you'll find, because I've done this with workouts before, if I do 10 sets of squats in one day versus you know two or three sets of squats or one set of squat, but do them in sequence so that the total volume is the same per week. So let's just say I did nine sets in one, in one or, or sorry, seven sets in one workout or one set a day for seven days. That seven set one day workout is going to get me way more sore right. and create way more damage. The one set over seven days, I feel minimal if no damage whatsoever. But the muscle building signal, the strength building signal is that is the same or better because my body's not combating the healing and the damage yeah. mm -hmm. that was caused from that last, that fatigue, you know, workout where seven sets of squats is really challenging, right? So this is pushing, this is tipping the scale to adaptation over healing. And that makes a huge difference when it comes to building your Yeah, and the more often you present that type of stimulus to your body, the more priority it has to to understand that th this is you know the environment that you're living in your body wants to yes. overcome the environment and so it's it's more apt to produce you know muscle to to be able to you know combat the the stresses of the environment that you're in and so versus you know just a few times a week it's less of a priority for the body it just wants to you know recoup and heal uh versus you know thrive yeah. and remember muscle the muscle building process is a strength building process uh it's there there is a there is some standard Stamina involved, strength, stamina, I guess you could call it, but it's mainly a strength thing. So we'll go to power, for example. Power is very much strength, okay? When you train plyometrics, um, one of the biggest mistakes people make is they, they jump and get fatigued, and it stops being plyometrics. Now it's just stamina. Real coaches know the best way to train plyometrics is you do one or two, and you wait a while until you're fresh to be able to explode again. That's how you get explosive. When you're doing it like this versus all in one or two workouts, you're taking that fatigue out of it. It's less endurance, less stamina-based, more strength-based. So the muscle building, the strength building that comes from this tends to be faster. Talk about plyos and coaches that understand that. I think I shared it with you. Did you share it? The Max Marzo? I did. Yeah. Oh, you did page. end up sharing that. Yeah. He was talking about, you know, uh, the respect that we have for, you know, Max Marzo and, and Corey Schlesinger and Paul Fabrics. Yeah. I'd say three of some of the best performance coaches that are out there. He actually just did a short little reel the other day explaining exactly that, that he thinks that you should not do any more than three repetitions uh, for a power exercise like that. And there should be long rest periods in between. So you mm -hmm. can gather yourself and work on technique. That's, that's, the, whole, that's, that's totally that's the whole purpose of it. Well, let's lay out a, some of the guidelines. Yeah. Let's lay out some guidelines for our listeners on if we were to kind of build a routine, uh, what would it kind of look like? So a six day a week, so six days a minutes. week. So almost every single day you take aside uh, 20 minutes um, to do a workout. And what you essentially want to do is you definitely want to do one compound lift. Um, and maybe uh, add an isolation lift to that, okay? And that'll you should have enough time in that 20-minute period to do about three sets of the compound lift and about two sets of the, iso of the isolation lift. So you're going to do like two exercises uh, during that workout. Alternatively, if you wanted to, you could just do five of the compound lift on some days. That's how I would do it on some days. But really, this gives you, when you look at all the days that you'll be doing the six days, if you do one compound lift for three sets and one isolation lift for two sets, you're going to be do, be able to do pretty much every exercise. You know what you want to do to add to that or to build on that. The way I would d decide whether I would do five of the compound or five, three compound and two isolation would be how I feel from the previous totally, workout. Totally. So you know how you gave the example of like it's got a lot of flexibility is like say it's a day where I feel really good. Like okay, I might get after my yeah. dead five sets of deadlifts. Right. I yeah. might get after it today, or maybe it felt like ooh, I'm still feeling it a little bit from my last deadlift session. So this time I'm only going to do three sets and back off the intensity, and then I'll do an isolation exercise to complement it. Yes. I think that's a good way to gauge. Yeah. That. The other way would be if I'm looking at hitting hard to target an area muscles that maybe don't get a lot of attention with a compound lift, like rear delts or something like that. You know, I'll throw in some like rear delt flies right, right, right. or something like that. But yeah, you, you have some flexibility here. And it, and again, if you're thinking, Oh, one or two exercises, well, yeah, it's six days a week though. Yeah. So really you have the ability to do six compound lifts or, you know, three compound lifts twice or the same compound lift all week, which I wouldn't recommend or, and then a bunch of isolation exercise that you could throw in yeah. that you can mix up uh, throughout the week. So you have a lot of flexibility here. Now, the exercises that you probably should choose from 
um, are as follows. And we wrote some of these down, right? So obviously squats, barbell squats got to be in there. Lunges, so some kind of a, or Bulgarian split stance squat. So split stance squat exercises where your legs are, are split. So lunges and Bulgarians fall into that category. You could put single legs, you know, step ups in there if you wanted to. Deadlifts and deadlift variations. So sumo, Romanian. trap bar, Romanian, conventional, that's all good. Uh, bench presses, incline presses, those are both in there. By the way, dumbbells or barbells, wouldn't make a difference. Your rows, rows, and there's a million row variations, right? Barbell row, you could do chest down row on the bench, pen you could do one row. arm dumbbell row. Seal rows, pin lay rows. Yeah, pin lay rows, cable rows, like all rows. Overhead presses, any overhead press, dumbbells, barbells, behind the neck, seated, standing, yeah. you know, single arm, kettlebell, kettlebell. those are all in there. Hip thrusts, I would even put in there as well. Um, that's I would consider that a good compound lift. Dips, chin ups. I mean, all those that I just gave you right there is is a great list of incredible compound lifts that hit the entire body. If you do all of them, you know, at some point in your workout. Yeah, if I were to rotate through them, I, I think I would do like an an upper lower upper lower upper lower. I love that. Right. So I would choose a compound lift. Upper that's lower compound, body. lower compound. Yeah. Yep. So every, basically, every other day you're hitting a compound lift for you know the upper body or the lower body, and then pairing it with a yeah. you know your favorite ice and isolation, isolation exercises. And anything you want. You know, or what I'm even saying? core, yeah, focus. Just some some focused area that you want to to bring up yep. in strength. Yeah, and then isolation, like you said, Adam, have fun. Yeah. Now you can, I don't care what you pick. Right. You want know, to do cable side, you know, laying cable lateral <laughs> or a <laughs> rear fly or a you know side spider curl or and the reason for that, okay, is because you're building this you're building this program. The foundation is around mm -hmm. these great compound lifts that are push pull squat type of movements that incorporate all those the yeah. smaller muscles. So they're not not getting worked out. I mean, you technically could theoretically just do five sets of all compound lifts and you're going to hit. I mean, that's kind of yeah. very, very much so how I think CrossFit does a lot of their their programming where it's not a lot. There's not a lot of isolate, not a lot of bicep curls and tricep no. pushdowns in it because they do so many great compound lifts. You don't have to worry about some of that stuff because so you technically focus everything around that. And then if you're going to do two sets of isolation stuff, then I mean, have fun with it. Now, you know, that's so this is five sets, six days a week, that's 30 sets. So that'd be like doing two workouts with 15 sets each. It's your typical hour workout. Now, here's where you can have fun with it. If you're more of a beginner, cut it down, two or three sets. If you're advanced, try a 30-minute workout six days a week. I would try. You could even try something like that. I wouldn't go too much longer than that, but you could even try something like that. But the idea is to take your total volume and see if you could divide it up over short workouts six days a week and then watch what happens to your body, okay? Watch what happens to your body. Literally, it's the same of everything except it's more frequent. And most people will see better results uh, doing it this way. And again, here's the thing I love about this, and, and, and this is how I would program it for clients. It's actually easier to stay consistent, especially when you look at the 20-minute uh, time range because it's easier for people to do a 20-minute workout every day than it is for them to take out an entire hour right. twice a week. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.